Welcome to another uh, Let's Talk IT Pro. My name is Rafael Perez. I'm your host again. So today I want really excited about this. I want to talk about the project Honolulu. So if you have been in the Microsoft Word managing servers, you are used for with the MMC. So you open one MMC, two, three, four, and then suddenly you have so many windows um, to manage a server. So if you need to connect to a remote server, so you open other MMCs or you actually remote desktop to server and perform the tasks. So the project Honolulu is basically a web-based console. So this is great because you can manage this on-prem or off-prem. So without any uh, uh, VPN connectivity, it's just like a web browser. So let me just show you what the project Honolulu is. So I have here, so the web page already open. So, but if you just use the aka.microsoft. slash Honolulu download deployment guide or feedback, we are going to talk about those three later on. You can easily go to, to the website. So in this case, I use the deployment guide and then I went, as soon as it opens, I just went back one option here to manage on-prem systems with Microsoft Project Honolulu. So is this first website. So the idea is you can manage any server that's connected to your network. So the, 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 the Project Honolulu basically is a gateway. So it's just a, a way for you to connect to a nice web interface but all the connectivity behind is doing with PowerShell, WMI, or, well, it's over WinRM. So it's already there for, so if, if you have a Windows Server 2016, great, you don't need to do anything else. If you have a Windows Server 2012 or 2012 R2, now you need to have extra um, a requirement. So it's not just the, the, the software that we are going to install, but also you have the uh, WMF, WMF5, so 5.1, sorry. So you can use for Windows 10 to manage the local server, but you also can con connect to, to other servers. So, but may, mainly here we are going to look at the Windows Server 2016. So in down, here down, it talks about the deployment options. So to download, you just go to aka.microsoft slash Honolulu download. Let me just close here. It's going to bring you to this evaluation center. You do the registration, you download, I already did this. And if you want to follow the deployment guide, so it's here, how to deploy. Basically it's like MSI, really simple MSI, really simple installation. So you just follow, or if you want to automate, you have some, some command line for automation. Otherwise it's just next, next, finish. And if you want to bring any feedback, you can go to AKA Honolulu feedback. So now you can have access down to, to the feedback form. So what I'm going to do here is just open my, my web server. So this is my, my server. I already download. So let me open here the downloads. We have here the technical preview 1709. So I'm just going to, to install. It's really simple, really small download, 31 meg. I will accept, I will create a desktop. And here, what I'm going to say is what port I'm going to do uh, and what certificate I'm going to use. In this case, I will generate a self-signed certificate and I'm going to use port 443 and then click install. So the installation is quite quickly. So the icon here on the desktop already appeared and should not take longer to, to finish the installation. Couple of things I found out when I first installed the Honolulu as well, it does not support Internet Explorer. It actually tells you to use Google Chrome or Edge. So it runs as a network account. So what I'm going to do here I'm going to start in private browsing. 
I'm going to browse 192.168.04. Sorry, HTTPS. Oops. Hopefully it will work. Uh, let me just validate if the network is actually the network. No, it's a wrong network. So let me just change the IP address here. And the IP address is 172.16.254.7. As you can see, it's totally different network because it's behind a firewall. It's Imagine that I actually simulate a internet. Um, so let me just try to simulate here kind of internet access. So let's just try to refresh here. So now it tells me it's not secure. I'm mean just going to continue on this website. And it asks for my username and password because I'm on another network. Let's use a service account I have as a domain admin. So as you can see here on the top, you're already opening Project Honolulu. And this is what I said about the browser, that supported browser. So try with Edge and Google Chrome. So in this case, I'm going to open Google Chrome again on HTTPS 192.168.04. Going to ask them, I trust. So you can use a public website, uh, uh, a public certificate if you are trusted. So because I use it self-signed certificate them um, it's just loading now so as you can see here is really nice interface the first time you can go for the step by step so and here as you can see it's already added my server I have here the server otherwise I could add more servers so now imagine that you have um 10 15 servers you want to manage clusters and so we can just click here on add you can add a server or you can then add uh other options so let me just go back here fail of cluster or hype coverage cluster so and here really simple to add other servers so we can just put the server so i have a server zero one this is actually my domain controller. So I'm going to use the account for this connection or use another account. So I'm going to use another account. Didn't work. This account should be the main enemy. It should work short. Oh yeah, now it worked. So I can now manage both servers. The first one is my domain controller. The second one is the server itself. So if you click here, then it will now bring me all the options that I can do with the server. So I have a nice view, I can restart, I can shut down, I can do some settings. So now imagine that uh, this is kind of, well, system management. So I can look at certificates, can look at devices, events. So this is the whole event viewer. Now it's basically, imagine that I don't need to be in the company to do server management. I don't, but it's not just in the company. I don't need even remote access to the company. I can publish this uh, secure and I will have access to the server. Shut down or here I have some errors. Um, we can add so roles and features. So if I wanna add some, let's say you get a new server, you wanna add stuff, you can just come here and install. 
So it's quite a easy way, it's a really nice way to be, to be honest, to actually do the remote management. And you can do even Windows update, okay? A uh, couple of other things, Microsoft is working on this. So the way they created this is extendable. So you have those three, four options out of the box, well, a bit more than options, but you can create extensions. You can install new extensions. So there is a whole new API being created for you to create and to install uh, extensions. So you can now manage whatever so software you may be. So as you can see here, everything that you can, you, we are able to manage is just automatically ex a extension. So you don't need to to do anything else. If I click here, this is my domain controller. So I have the, the users, for example, that's because it's a domain controller, you cannot use local users. Okay, so but you can manage it for wall, you can have the, the, the uh, files, events, you can have even manage the registry if you need. So I have just open here the registry quite quickly. So it's actually giving a whole new world for us that actually not always connect to the to the network. So think about this, start looking about the project Honolulu. This will be a great way to actually start managing uh, new devices. Uh, if you have a 2016, you don't need to install anything else. If you have 2012 or 2012 R2, you need to install, install the WMF uh, 5.1. I really recommend you to, to them, uh, not just let's go and do it, but then think about uh, the services you are going to manage and the scenarios you can do. Maybe start with your Windows 10 machine and then let's go from. Okay, thank you very much for watching this. I see you in the next one.